Who is that man talking to? Matilda. Pixie's the future. Loki's twisted threats. What trick is this? None. You drink, pig speaks. In water, iron then shall float. As easy as a wooden boat. Iron? Hello, uh, pig. What madness do you spoke, devil? I don't feel anything. Are you a talking pig? I, Matilda the Seer, lift the veil. Shall I show you what is to come, Raven? Betrayal burns your blood, Raven Feeder. Brother against brother till wolves devour the sky. The Red Sparrow will set White and Red War. Thirty years the sons of the licentious lion tear at the earth and sod. Shame on him who thinks ill of it. Whatever was in that brew, it was powerful and mind twisting. What? What are you saying? The Red Sparrow will Hello, settle in pig. the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> that pig. Where did you get such a surprising creature? Mark it. And is that all you have to say? Pig speaks enough for both of us. Good day. What is your name? I am Avon, of the Raven Clan. And are you a flighter? When the mood strikes. Do you wish to flight with me? Oh, no, certainly not. I don't engage in such things. Haven't a head for it. My brother, however, he is quite proficient. Ah, then you wish to compete with me. I should mention, my brother has taken a strict vow of silence. If you wish to flight, I will translate and relay his verses. I think I understand. Good. Hark! To those gathered round, wave your hands and rejoice. I shall trounce this poor fool without use of my voice. Such is his challenge. Do you wish to face him? I'll happily challenge you. S sorry, him. Here you are, my bet. Good. Now remember, it is not me you are flighting. I am but a conduit for his words. I will keep this well in mind. Good. He is ready. Come you closer, friend Eivor, and lend me your ear. The most cutting of flights from my mouth you'll not hear. But by proxy I'll call you a milksop and boor. Though you speak through another, your flighting's still poor. Your body is withered, your garments absurd. I'll topple you over with nary a word. I'm devoted to flights, though to silence avowed. Though you choose to be quiet, your folly is loud. Oh my! Your visage is ghastly. I'm cowed by your stink. I should like to write more, but you're not worth the ink. 
So, a last parting phrase. You're as dim as they come. With such drivel to speak, I see why you keep mum. Very fine work. As an impartial observer, I must say you won. Thank you. My brother has a few parting words. You have bested me squarely and thus won the day. So take what you've earned now and hurry away. I will. Farewell to you both. Ut congregentur ad Marcus et Dixit ad vulgares de terra superbus est lo. Venite audite verbum domini in nostri Jesu Nazareno eras. Ut non videtur eis nimis. Strange. Travel widely to become wise, for all things are too easy at home, and the ignorant who sit among wise men will be mocked. Here in the ancient kingdom of Kent, the Jutes have brought me to where his fire burns through traces of the Nephilim. Here the Lord...
Valka the Seer can use this. Let's get you to Valka. I should get this to the Seer. All men will want this. Land for Volka. What is that? 
first place. What troubles you, old man? Please, I beg you. How many are there? I must know. How many what? The stones. Every time I count them, the answer is different. First twenty, then twenty-one. The fair folk made a madman of me. Rock cannot appear and disappear. I shall count them. Run round and round. Pick up your skirts. Still drag your robes through the dirt. Lord's a lady's, Lord's a lady's dancing in the dill, chicken in their shirts and socks, dancing off to hell. Your stone centuries, I've counted them. And how many lords and ladies come to dance a jig? There are twenty-one. I am as sure as I can be. See? Never the same. Never the same. Please, count them again. You must. To save my wits. Cannot get the same number twice. Never the same. Never the same. Cobweb cloaks and magpie hats. Now there are twenty-six. How can this be? See? Never the same. Never the same. Please, count them again. You must. To save my wits.
This is madness. They change each time. Don't close your eyes, or they'll steal the glinting flint scrabble head away. Perhaps there are 23. Ha! They have bewitched you too. Twirl and spin and dance and grin. Pyrak, it comes to bite your shin. Who came crawling from the moor like a fat black rabbit without any legs? I see you, glisten little imp. 27, 21, 23, 24, 22, 22, 22. I don't know how to help you. It seems as if the stones appear and disappear at will. You should not stay here. Leave. Leave before they claim you. Does Skrimir toy with me? Casting his magic in England. That stone. Was it here before? And where is my mad friend? Damn this cursed place. I'm here, old man. Tell me your tale. Three young men came to me not long ago. Braggarts, full of drink and sin. Death had claimed a friend of theirs. So they set out to find Death and teach him a lesson. That is foolish. We Norse do not seek to control Death. We embrace it. I. But rudely they demanded of me, tell us where to find death. You are old. You must know him. Look no further, said I. He is under the great oak in the forest behind me. And that is where they went. A strange tale. And one that lingers like a terrible dream. Is this the great oak the old man spoke of? Death. So this is what the old man meant. But what happened here? By his pallor, I would say poison took this one's life. What was he reaching for, I wonder? Strangled. That is no bandit's work. by poison. No sign of a struggle. He must have taken it unknowingly. Food and ale. But why make a camp here if they were searching for death, as the old man said? Has played some part in this sorry scene. Three men found hidden treasure beneath the tree. They made camp and they decided how to spread the price. Two of them turned on the third. But he was one step ahead of them and had already poisoned their ale. So the glistener of silver drove these greedy fools to murder. It seems they found death after all. Or death of them.
instead, from fear or something else. He was terrified. Believed himself cursed after killing a she-wolf in her cup. And that stench. Rubbish and rotting food. In his fear, he barricaded himself inside. Little wonder the rats came. He fulfilled his own prophecy. And nature took its revenge. If the bees bother you, boy, maybe do not stand so close to the hive. But I need honey. Just a little. It's for my friend. It's all she likes to eat. I've tried poking it with a stick, but it riots them up something chronic. She's so gentle and kind, but if she doesn't get her honey, I don't know what will happen. Go. My yes. friend loves honey. She has a very sweet tooth. <sighs> I only want to scrobble a little. They have plenty to share. You got the honey? Oh, thank you. Oh, that looks delicious. Leave it on that rock and she'll be right along. See you, old friend. The rock is just over there by the tree. Hurry before she comes. She'll be here soon. Winifred looked after me ever since mother and father died. She's my best friend. The other children tease me. Sometimes they throw stones to shoo me away and call me the grubby watcher in the woods. Winifred saved my life. I was curled up on the grass praying that God would take me too. And she scared the wolves away. Winifred, I got you honey. Winifred, my bestest of bears. Any day spent with you is my favorite day. So today is my new favorite day. This kind stranger got you some honey. What do we say? Thank you. All that honey must have given you quite a thirst. Are you really all right out here on your own, little one? Silly. I'm not alone with the very best of bears by my side. Goodbye, and thank you. Come on, Winifred. Shall we walk to the lake? Maybe we can splash in the reeds. That's strange fellowship. But then... Friendship can often be found in unexpected places. What happened, little one? Mummy's ring! I just took it out to look at it, and a mean bird snatched them off me. What were you doing with your mother's ring? 
Someone borrowed it, and she asked me to get it back. But now it's up in that tree, and I can't climb that. There's the bird's nest. I could hit the nest with something. Knock it down. Something fell from the nest. Here you! Take your hands off my property! That ring is mine! Give it back, I say! Are you the girl's mother? Stepmother! My husband gave me that ring. My stepdaughter stole it from me. She's been a plague to me ever since I married her father. When all I've tried to show her is kindness. She says you borrowed it from her mother. Her mother is dead. Oh, perhaps it did belong to her once. I didn't know. Your new husband gave you his dead wife's ring. We don't have much. I will not spurn a gift from a good heart. He's a fine man, and I love him, dear. But his daughter will never love me. Not while she still pretends her mother is alive. Let the girl have the ring. It is all she has of her mother. Do this and new bonds may grow between you in time. You are wise, stranger. It is hard to give it up, but it belongs to her more rightfully than I. Take it to her, please. Have your mother's ring. Be careful in the future. We should hold tight to what is precious. I saw you talking to my stepmother down there. Did she try to take it off you? What a warty old dragon. She agreed that you should have it. Be kind to her, little girl. She's trying her best for you. I suppose. I'll speak to mother about it. Farewell, then. Someone is stuck? My brother, chasing some foolish legend that if you see old Hisser from above and catch his tail, he will grant you a wish. And what of your leg? Likely sprained, trying to climb up to rescue him. <laughs> we are a sorry pair. Stop 
clucking like a laying hen. I'm the one with the broken leg. At least grab old Hisa's tail while you're up there. Something is hissing. I'll help you down, but how is a big, strong Norse like yourself afraid of heights? And snakes! I don't know how I let my brother talk me into these schemes. I think I just give in to his endless scolding. But I'm sick to the back teeth of him. Climb up on it. Go in that cave of wolves on it. Eat that red mushroom. Siblings are a source of great joy and equal misery. I too have a brother. Does yours put you in the moor of death every opportunity he gets? Come, let's get you down. And perhaps you can tell him how you feel. Talk of my feelings to my brother. I would rather let the snakes gnaw on my tender parts. This way. It's too high to get down from here. There, the ladder. Watch your step. Which way now? This way. There! Another slithering devil waiting to get me. Thank you, stranger, for bringing this waste of breath back to me. You're welcome. But what is the story you spoke of? Old Hissa? A pretty legend. He who catches Old Hissa's tail will find her heart's wish granted. We have followed England's legends and found little but peril. It's time to hang up our well-worn boots. Farewell. May Odin litter your path with riches. Goodbye. And keep each other safe, for a good brother is the truest treasure from the gods. Now see, you big lump. All that wailing, it was as easy as a hop and a jump. <laughs> keep back up, and I'll leave you here for the wolves. <laughs> oh, no. Look at your leg. Is it truly broken? No, sprained is all. But I'd like to see you get by without me. Couldn't even climb down a...